Here we have a lamina in the xy plane. The perpendicular axis theorem tells us that the moment of inertia of the lamina about the z axis is equal to the sum of the moments of inertia about the x and y axis. Now, the moment of inertia of the lamina about the z axis can be written iz, and the perpendicular axis theorem tells us that iz equals ix plus iy. Okay, to prove this theorem, we take a mass element in the lamina. Let's call it its mass delta m. Well, sometimes you'll see the triangle for delta. Well, it doesn't matter whatever notation you want to use, of course. Let's get the ix, the moment of inertia of it. Well, ix is the moment of inertia of the entire lamina about the x-axis. But let's get the moment of inertia of just this mass element about the x-axis. So how do we do that? Well, we need this perpendicular distance to the x-axis. In general, that distance is called r, the perpendicular distance of the mass element to the axis of rotation. But what is it here? Well, we could go by the coordinates of this point. You know, the y-coordinate of this point is called y, whatever y is. Uh, so we just call that distance y. So, for the x-axis, the moment of inertia is delta m times the square of this distance. So it doesn't matter whether y is positive or negative. Uh, we take the square of it. So that'll always be positive. Now let's consider the moment of inertia of delta m about the y-axis. Well, the distance to the y-axis is just the x-coordinate of this point. Well, the x-coordinate could be negative. Whereas in general, of course, well, a distance is always positive. But since we're squaring it, we don't have to worry about that. So we take delta m and square the x-coordinate. Now what about the moment of inertia of delta m about the z-axis? Well, we need to get the perpendicular distance of delta m to the z-axis. That's actually just the distance of it to the origin. Okay, so we imagine rotating the lamina about the z-axis. It's just rotating it about this point, actually. Although we keep the lamina in the xy plane. So it actually is rotating about the axis. Anyway, let's suppose the distance of the mass element to this point is L. So the moment of inertia of delta m about the z-axis. So again, it's the perpendicular distance is delta m times L squared. But you see, we have a right angle triangle formed here with sides x, y, and L. So by Pythagoras' theorem, L, the hypotenuse, L squared is x squared plus y squared. So we can just multiply this equation by delta m, and we get this relation here. Delta m x squared plus delta m y squared equals delta m l squared. In other words, the sum of the moments of inertia of the mass element delta m about the x-axis and the y-axis is equal to the moment of inertia of the mass element delta m about the z-axis. If we want the moment of inertia of the entire lamina about the y-axis, we just take the sum of this quantity, sum all the mass elements, and of course we take the limit as delta m goes to zero to make this sum more exact, so we get an integral, similarly for this term and similarly for this term. So after we take the limit, as delta m goes to zero, these sums will become integrals, and uh, you know this will become the moment of inertia about the y-axis, and this term becomes the moment of inertia about the x-axis. And this term here will be the moment of inertia of the lamina about the z-axis. Now in a previous video we got the moment of inertia of a circular lamina about an axis through the center of the lamina. That axis is perpendicular to the lamina. If m is the mass of the lamina and little a is its radius then the moment of inertia about this axis, we can call it iz, is a half ma squared. Now, the x and y axes are in the plane of the lamina, and we want to get ix and iy. So we use the fact that iz equals ix plus iy, what we just proved. Now, we can also use symmetry to show that the moment of inertia of the disk about the x-axis is the same as the moment of inertia of the disk about the y-axis. Why is that? Well, both axes pass through the center of the disk. So ix and iy should be the same, there's no reason why they should be different. There's no reason why this axis is preferable to the y-axis. We just, we just have the same symmetry. So if these are equal to each other, 
well we could just write it as 2 times the moment of inertia about one of the axes say 2ix and from that we get ix equals a half ma squared divided by 2 well that's a quarter ma squared and of course that's the same as iy notice that ix or iy um, is less than iz a quarter M ma squared is less than half ma squared that tells us that it should be easier to turn the disc around the x-axis so the disc would be coming out of the screen as we spin it around the x-axis than it is to turn it around the z-axis of course when the disc has been turned around the z-axis it's being mapped onto itself whereas when it was turned around the x-axis it's not it's um, been taken out of its position in part B we want to use the parallel axis theorem to find the moment of inertia of the disc about a tangential axis parallel to the plane of the disc. So here's a tangential axis that's parallel to the plane of the disc. Or we could say it's lying in the plane of the disc. So we want to look at an axis through the center of mass of the disc that's parallel to this axis. Well that's this one here. Now the moment of inertia of the disc about this axis that passes through the center of mass of the disc we know is the same as the moment of inertia about the x or y axis that we calculated earlier because both x and y axes were in the plane of the discs and so is this one. So uh, those moments of inertia are all the same, half of this thing. Now here's the parallel axis theorem. So L is any axis that's parallel to C d is the distance between the axes. Well that's just equal to the radius of the disc which is a. So I C is a quarter ma, we have a quarter ma squared plus one ma squared. That's five quarters ma squared. So we would be rotating this disc about this line. So rotating it like that. Suppose we have this axis here which is parallel to Z. Let's call this one M. Now we're interested in rotating the disc about M. So we use the parallel axis theorem. Um, so we want M times the distance between these two axes. Well the distance is also A here. So we have MA squared here, same as before. But this time we have IZ, which is a half MA squared. So we see that IM is 3 halves MA squared. 3 halves is more than 5 quarters. 1 half is more than 1 and a quarter. So it's actually more difficult to rotate the disc about axis M than it is to rotate it about axis L.